Hey, good morning, guys. I uh, just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, I know we have that worksheet with all the questions on uh, to solve, and there's two things that might help you. I don't normally explicitly teach it uh, for regular physics and honest physics, but honestly, it's not that difficult, and I figured I might as well just uh, tackle it. And then I'm going to solve this problem just to help you um, see how we use these two, uh, what we call rules, Kirchhoff's rules, in order to solve problems. So let's talk about these rules now. Okay, so the first of these laws is, or rules is called the loop rule. We've already talked about this. It's actually a fairly easy one to make sense of. Uh, the loop rule basically says that the sum of the voltages in a loop is equal to zero. So if I just grab my pen here, um, a loop is any loop that goes from a battery uh, around anything like this back to the battery. That is a single loop right there. You could also have a bigger one around here, but it tells me that the sum of voltages equals zero. What does that mean? It means whatever voltage I gain from the battery, I have to lose it from this resistor and I have to lose it from that resistor in order for the voltages to equal zero. I will talk about that more explicitly in a second when I actually solve this problem. Um, but before I do that, let's talk about the uh, second rule, which is called the junction rule. And again, we kind of talked about this informally, but the junction rule basically states that uh, whatever current coming into a junction has to equal the current coming out of a junction. This right here is a, 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 a junction. If there is a current flowing into this junction, then uh, let's just call that I, I'm going to call it I1. Uh, then this current plus that current, uh, I3 and I2, it basically states that the current going in I1 has to equal I2 plus I3. Otherwise, you're losing charge, right? You're, you're losing electrons or gaining electrons. This current plus this current in amps has to equal that current there. So that is that rule there. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Uh, and when I say solve this problem, all I want to do is I want to find all the information. I want to find the current and voltages across each of the resistors. Okay, so the first thing I always like to do is figure out what the total resistance of the whole circuit is. Once I can do that, I can find the current through the battery. Um, so let's find the total resistance it would be easy if it was all series, but it's not. There's um, This guy is kind of in series, right? Because the current goes through this resistor, but then it splits and these two are in parallel. So what I need to do is I first of all want to find the equivalent resistance of this 4 ohm and this 12 ohm resistor. So because these two are in parallel, I'm going to go back to the 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Um, so the equivalent resistance of these is R is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12. Um, I can't add 1 quarter plus 1 twelfth, but I can turn 1 quarter into 3 quarters, uh, 3 twelfths, and then I can add it. So 1 over R is equal to uh, 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12, right? Because now it's the same number, but they have the same denominator. Uh, 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12 is 4 over 12. 1 over R is equal to 4 over 12, um, which honestly, 4 over 12, let's just call that 1 third. Okay, so 1 over R is equal to 1 third. So what that means is this is like having a single 3 ohm resistor. If I flip this side, if I flip that side, then the equivalent resistance of these two resistors in parallel is equal to 3 ohms. All right, so now I know that these two are acting like a single 3 ohm resistor. Conveniently, this guy is also 3 ohms, so the resistance from this one plus the equivalent resistance of this one, 3 plus 3, is going to equal 6 ohms. So the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit is equal to 6 ohms. Okay, next thing I want to do is I would like to find the uh, current coming out through the battery. Um, and I just changed it to purple. We know that voltage is equal to current times resistance. Right now, I know the resistance of the whole circuit. I know the voltage of the battery is 12 volts. So let's just rearrange this. This is going to be I is equal to V over R. So it's going to equal 12 volts divided by 6 ohms. 12 divided by 6 is going to equal 2 amps. So there is, a, I'm going to draw it as an arrow, a 2 amp current coming through there. Perfect. Okay, this is where we get to the part of the problem where we just need to think of, a, basically solve what we can when we can. 
I know that there's a 2 amp current coming out of the battery. But bearing in mind, these electrons aren't going to bunch up, they ain't going to spread out. So if there's a 2 amp current coming out of the battery, there's also going to be a 2 amp current coming through this one. The current's only going to change once we get to this um, junction right here. So now I know that there's a 3 ohm resistor, there's a 2 amp current through it. Let's go ahead and find the voltage drop for this guy. And let me just change color to, uh, I don't know, blue will do. Uh, so I want to find the voltage drop across here. I just kind of drew that on as if it was a voltmeter. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. I know that the current is 2 amps. I know the resistance is 3 ohms. So the voltage is equal to 2 amp times 3 ohm. It's going to equal 6 volts. So there is a 6 volt drop across this resistor. Perfect. Okay, so now we just got to keep finding everything else that we can. But um, I think this is where we need to start thinking about this loop rule. <clears throat> because here's what we know. We know that there is a 12 volt uh, gain through the battery here. If you're an electron, you're going to go through here. Let's just make one loop where I go around in this direction here. What I know is I gain 12 volts right here. And then I know as I go through this resistor here, we just said that there's a 6 volt drop, right? And it is a drop because you're going through the resistance. So then I minus 6 volts here. So the question is, how much voltage am I going to lose through this 4 ohm resistor here? Well, if I start with 12 and then I lose 6, this is the last resistor before I get home, right? So it has to be a negative 6 volt drop there. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it for the next one as well. If I make a bigger loop, and let me just do it in the same color but a kind of dashed line, if I make this loop instead where I go through this section of the current, the exact same thing is going to be true. I gain 12 volts here. I lose 6 volts on this resistor here. There's only one more resistor to, you know, go through before I get back to the battery according to that loop. So I need to have a 6 volt drop there. Okay, so I'm just changing, uh, because I was trying to color code it a little bit, I'm just changing uh, the color here. So 6 volts and 6 volts. We know that each of these two resistors, we lose 6 volts through it. So actually now we have the resistance, we have the voltage, now we can find the current. So let's find the current. Uh, let me go back to that wonderful purple color, uh, which I was using for current. Um, and I guess we'll do this one first. Uh, the uh, voltage is equal to current times resistance. That's the equation we already, always know. If I want to find the current, then the current has to be the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage is 6 volts. The resistance is 12 ohms. So I have 6 divided by 12. I have 0 0.25. Uh, no, that's not right. That's not true. 0 0.5 amps. I have a current of 0 0.5 amps going through this resistor. Or I can say I have a current of 0 0.5 amps uh, coming down this branch of the junction. So this is where I can be smart or I can be smarter. Um, I can do a couple of things. To find the current through this guy, I can do it two ways. I can do the exact same thing I did before, which is, uh, and I'm going to have to go over here, I'm afraid, Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. I can say the voltage is 6 volts. The resistance is 4 ohms. This equals 1.5 amps, um, which is easy enough. I mean, that's good. That's correct. Or what I can do is I can use this um, fact that... Um, is there a highlighter? There's a highlighter somewhere, right? Uh, yeah, highlighter. Uh, I can use the fact that I know that there is 2 amps worth of current flowing into this junction. I know there's 0 0.5 amps coming out, so if I use the loop rule, what I can do is I can say, oh, I'm in the highlighter still, but that's fine. Uh, the current in um, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. The current going in is 2 amps. The current coming out of this branch here is uh, 0 0.5 amps. So what is this current across here? It has to be 1.5, right? Because 1.5 plus 0 0.5 is equal to 2 amps. You can actually calculate that either way. They both get the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, then you're probably screwed up somewhere. And that's it. Um, so right now, we have got everything we need. We have got the uh, voltage through each of the resistors. We've got the current through each of the resistors. And uh, we were given the resistance. So you can calculate power. Power equals voltage times current. So I'm not going to waste my time doing that right now. 
Um, but that is how you solve the more complicated problems. I hope this helped. Um, and uh, we'll talk in class about when this worksheet is going to be due. So that'll do. I'm going to sign out. Whiteout.